So now I'm going to talk about doing freestanding lace. Freestanding lace is done on aquamesh or a stabilizer that can dissolve in water. I actually have one piece here of the aquamesh and one piece of topping. Like I said, everything goes better with topping. So I'm going to go ahead and hoop my stabilizer. Remember to always hoop standing up. That way you can apply equal pressure to the hoop. Now, because I only have very thin stabilizer in here, take a couple of turns to tighten it. Make sure it's flush. The number one problem I see with students is that <clears throat> the stabilizer or the hoop is not tight enough, and then as they're embroidering, it comes out, and lining it up can be very, very difficult. Yeah. And this is actually going to go on top where our design is. But first, let's put a placement stitch in here so I know where to put my topping on. So it's important when you're doing freestanding lace that you always have the same color on top in the bobbin. So if I was doing red lace, I would have a filled red bobbin. If I'm doing white, white bobbin. If you're doing any other color, you need to make sure you have the same color in the bobbin because with freestanding lace, you'll be able to see your bobbin color through the lace. Okay, I have now hooped my Equimesh. And here's the topping. This is my Stitch H2O. I'll put it in the center. And this is the ODSD tape. And it works wonders on everything. So I'll put a little bit of on the top, a little piece of tape on the top, and it just tears easily. Now you could put a piece on the side. This one's sticking up a bit there, so I'm going to put a little piece to the side here and here. And let's take this over to the machine, and we're going to load up our design. And it is our bow that is freestanding lace. Let's go ahead and put our hoop on. So this tells us it's going to take 20 minutes to do. Freestanding lace does take a while to stitch out. It also takes a lot of thread. So make sure before you start that your bobbin is almost full. And now it is ready to stitch. Now remember, I've told my machine to stop when it starts to stop so I can cut. You can always disable that if you want.
We are now done with our freestanding lace. Okay, so let's go over to the table now. So I'm going to take it out of the hoop. Pop it out. Set our hoop aside. And I tend to reuse my little pieces of tape. You can usually get two or three uh, projects out of it. Now what I want to do is just do a rough cut around here and then I'm going to soak it in some warm water. And it's just a rough cut. So here's my freestanding lace. This is my bowl of warm water. And I'm just going to let it soak for a minute. I'm kind of working it in. I have better success using a bowl of warm water as opposed to putting it in the tap under warm water. And I'm just kind of working it through. And it makes it a bit, I call it on the slimy side, that's the starch in it because it is freestanding lace. And if you were doing a, um, a building, you would want it to have some structure to it. Let me snip that off. And you decide how much stiffness or how much starch you want left in there. So I just have a towel here, and you just want to let that dry in there. Now the idea thing is that you want to have something a bit heavy and flat. In this case, I like using the Taylor's clapper, and it will dry flat. If you don't put something heavy on it, i.e. the clapper, what will happen is that as it dries, it'll start to curl up. And then you can just re-wet it and put the weight on it. A book works, but I like using the clapper. And that's it for freestanding lace.